Being an entrepreneur can be a lonely place. Most businesses don't even get past the first three years. So in this series, we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs that are high performing or high performing businesses that can help you with hints, tips and hacks to help you fast forward your way to success. My name is Mark Burgess. I've got over 20 years experience working as an entrepreneur, building up various different businesses. I've wrote a best selling book, I speak nationally and internationally at different conferences and this is Raising Your Game. Okay, on this episode of Raising Your Game, I meet a guy called Richard Woods, who was a finalist on the BBC's Apprentice, and he now runs a company called Lead Gen Academy, which put on the biggest Lead Gen summits in the UK. We talk about all things Lead Gen, and how by actually narrowing the focus on who you put your adverts in front of, could actually increase the amount of people that you get inquiries from. Right, Richard. Hello. Thanks very much for coming in. Some people may recognise you already, but uh, for the people that don't, are you all right just to give us a bit of background on yourself, you know, what you're all about? Yeah, of course. Um, I think the best way to think about me is I'm all about lead generation. I'd like to think of myself as Mr. Lead Gen, as sad as it sounds. Um, but I started off my career in marketing, came out of university, went straight into an agency that I set up myself run around trying to create um, huge marketing campaigns where I was doing everything under the sun from website design to print ads to local networking events that we're putting on. We even put on a St. George's event in the high street for our local, uh, um, local town. And, uh, I, and I loved it, but what I realized is that niching and refining what I did into something that's so important, like getting your phone ringing and your inbox pinging with hot new inquiries. That's kind of our little mantra. So lead generation became the thing I became fascinated with. I wrote a book about it. I uh, went out and did a business plan that then uh, created a lead generation agency. We've got lots of people working it. Um, and during that time, I thought, well, I was sort of sitting there with my wife and this, uh, this music came on. It was like this da 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 And I was like, ah, oh, it's The Apprentice again. What a bunch of arrogant whatchamacallits. I could do so much better than that. And uh, my wife said, uh, well, if you think you're so great, well, go on then, go and do it. And uh, I thought, mm, you know, because well, I am an arrogant whatchamacallit, so I thought, well, I'll go and do it. Um, and before I know it, I find myself in a boardroom with Lord Sugar, and uh, <laughs> I just think, really, how did that happen? Um, so since then, and I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll dive a little bit into the, the Apprentice stuff in a bit, but since then, I've gone on to go and do my business plan, grow a lead generation agency, and then because I know about lead generation, that piece I find so vital, I've been able to parachute that into a number of other ventures, which I've gone out and brought everything under the sun from landscape gardening companies to uh, boiler servicing businesses to running now the largest lead generation event in the UK, the Lead Gen Summit, and um, a Lead Gen Academy. So, so what's it like sitting in the in the boardroom with Lord Sugar? Then, is it uh, how it looks on the telly, or is it very different? Yeah, when you get that phone call, of course, I was trying to act cool with the phone call, like, yes, got in. But two weeks later, a blacked out Mercedes arrives at your house, right? So you, you, your, your life was normal, and then suddenly two weeks later, you've got a car turn up and you're off. And my wife um, came in on the Thursday before I got the car on the Saturday with a clear brew pregnancy test going, I'm pregnant. Whoa. <laughs> I was like, whoa! And then I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I'm off for three months. <laughs> that's the second best yeah, thing that's ever I'm happened gone. to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I'm off. Obviously the first best is my first son. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 So, okay. <laughs> so you're gone. And so um, you literally go for three months. And the first thing that happens is they drive you up to this place that's like a warehouse in Park Royal. And it's like tumbled down, it's sort of the back end of some industrial state, really weird, near the Bridge Cafe. So it's kind of like this thing, this iconic bit. And you've got these um, 18 Mercedes all lined up and you're about to go in and the Mercedes pulls up and you get out, another one pulls up, get out, and you get out and you're given your suitcase and you walk through this black corridor and the, the, the iconic reception area is there. And you're like, oh my God, it's a set. I thought it was in Canary Wharf. I thought I was going to some big tower, but it's there. And you're looking around going, all right, okay. Cause you're not, you're told nothing. You're not allowed to talk to anyone. And then of course the phone goes and the receptionist, which you see her face, cause I've never seen her face yeah. for nobody's seen it. You're like, wow, okay. She's like, I'm, I'm like, like fan zoning. Uh, and Lord Sugar will see you now. And the doors open and you just go, you go completely white. And you're just thinking, Oh, oh my God, he's, the, and you, you're looking at him going, he, he has, he looks like Madame Two Swords, you could almost, and then he moves, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, it's real, it's real, <laughs> and it's, and there you are, so it's, 
it's it's weird. There's there's um, 18 cameras. It's it's crazy. There's no roof. It's obviously in a big warehouse, and it's it's it. Your heart is yeah. the whole time. Mental. That must have been that must have been <laughs> some experience. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, from the experience of working on The Apprentice, but more importantly, from all of the stuff that you did in marketing. You mentioned that you came out of university, went straight into like lead gen, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you must have uh, done that right through the period of lead gen going uh, into Google and social and all of that sort of stuff and, and, and before that as well. Would you say is some of the main things whereby <clears throat> companies have sort of thought to themselves, right, we need to get our lead gen sorted and then uh, they've sort of, I don't know, gone all in for a, a month and a half, and then they thought, oh, we're, this, this don't work, we're going back to where we started. Like, what? And, uh, as opposed to companies that, are, that have, have gone all in and, and, and had some great results that tell a great story about it. Where, where's the difference there? Oh, it's, it's, there's a huge difference, and I actually think it's one of the biggest problems with entrepreneurship and, and entrepreneurs themselves. And, and again, I'm, I'm talking about myself a, a lot of the time as well. It's the magpie effect. It's shiny thing to shiny thing to shiny thing. And there's nothing more obvious than social media and that sort of space for marketing. So it used to be a case that we'd all pile into um, Google and we'd do the Google ads and then we'd want to get these, yeah, the retargeting and then we'd have all the different stuff like the Google AdSense on our website. So we actually had ads on our site. So people are like, oh, I can make money on my website now and oh, we'll put this code in. And really, that's a bad idea. And then it's email marketing or the fortunes in the list. So we've got to get all these big spammy lists. We're buying lists from everywhere. And then Twitter and then, you know, all these sort of stuff. And now I'm getting people wanting to talk about Yik Yak. And I'm like, really? Like, guys, you're an accountancy firm. Like, why do you want to talk about Yik Yak? I mean, come on, like, let's not talk about this stuff. So it, it's, but I always say to them, have you nailed one? Yeah. Have you just nailed one? Have you nailed Facebook ads? Or have you nailed YouTube ads? Or have you nailed, um, you know, email marketing, for God's sake? Have you even nailed that yet? And if you can nail one thing, and then you know what that feels like and looks like, then you've got a right to start looking at something else and something else. But if you can't nail one, don't just go from new channel to new channel thinking it's going to be the silver bullet that's going to make you grow, because it won't be. Because if you're built on sand, even if you're using titanium to make your frame, it's going to go sink into the sand. So you need to get some good foundations. And I know you talk about this, getting a decent product offering and a decent business together. You can do all the marketing in the world, you can have the best, you could have Google themselves do your advertising for you. But if you are built on sand, you haven't got a good business, then it's just going to fall out the bottom. It's the leaky funnel syndrome, you yeah. know, all this, these coming in. But if you haven't got a good salesperson, if you haven't got a good product, they're just going to come back out the bottom. Yeah, we, we uh, do actually uh, have that conversation a lot with our clients. Um, and I, I remember speaking to a client just a few weeks ago, a potential new client who's uh, in the estate agency sector where we work and was just saying to me like, you know, right, we wanna, we've got a good business. We want to start getting inv involved in this whole digital marketing thing. We're going <laughs> we're gonna to really invest in with somebody uh, for the next three months. And we want, what we want is more sellers and more landlords, more buyers, more tenants. We'll give it to the end of the year and see how, how people are performing. And I was kind of saying to him like, it's probably not for us um, because you're saying it like this digital marketing thing is just going to bring you in yeah. loads of new business. Yeah. It's just being in business. It's yeah. no different to sending out a leaflet. It's just more cost effective yeah. and you can be a bit more targeted with it. Yeah. So what is it you're offering that's going to bring in all these mm. people? And I think like you say, like if you haven't got anything that anyone's interested in, it doesn't matter if you put a television advert in the middle of the Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. one's going to be interested. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you must uh, have seen uh, quite a lot of changes in the way that lead gen works. Um, what's some of the main things that you've seen change over the time that you've been doing it? So it used to be a case of throw enough against the wall and see what sticks. So huge campaigns and huge databases. And uh, <clears throat> it's kind of taken the, the, from, from the mass media. So if you think about the newspapers, mass, you know, or, or leaflet droppings or anything along that, you'll be pushing out all this content. Um, and then you go, well, actually now it's more like laser sighted and it's using um, actual specific targeted around demographics. So I just want to target women that live in Feltham that are 
40 to 45 that drive, yeah. you know, X, Y, Z. And you just think, oh, okay, yeah, you can do that. And we can't just do that on, say, Facebook. You can actually now start to do it on Google Ads because Google are catching up now. That's, that's one of the things that, that has been really amazing at the moment. Google's realized that they got behind Facebook in terms of the audience targeting because mm. they're all about keywords. Well, keywords mean nothing. If I, Prada handbags, well, you could be a student like liking Prada handbags or you could be an actual buyer for Prada handbags. You're still going to put the name in of go find it. But you want to work on women that are 45 that want to have Prada handbags. So Google's had to bring that audience piece into its ad system and now it's catching up with Facebook. And that's huge. Yeah. That's for Google to be surpassed. So hopefully the price of their ads will start to get a little bit more sensible because they've gone stupid. Facebook's are going to go up a bit, but now YouTube's coming in and yeah. giving us a third option. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. How do you get a company to get over the idea that when you say, what type of people do you want to target? You know, women of between 40 and 45 for Prada handbags that earn over a certain amount of money. How do you get over the idea that most businesses just want to target everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're worried oh, about missing out on... If they got a pulse, we could sell yeah. our insurance to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could. But what, who was the last three clients that were the highest paying, the most fun to work with, and the people that you really wanted to enjoy um, and have more of? Let's write those down. Right, now let's look at them and go, well, what do they look like? Well, oh, okay, so they are actually all female, and they are actually all, you know, with kids, and they are, you know... And before you know it, then you've got a set of people that are exactly the right type of market and and then they go oh my god i never even realized that and then they go well let's look at your worst clients let's write all those down oh actually they look like men that are this this it's like yeah so in every business you have the kind of 80 percent 80 20 rule don't you you have sort of 20 percent of your clients that deliver 80 percent of your revenue well then just focus on those 20 percent yeah and once you can do that and build the lead gen funnel out then it's a case of just put, turning up the ad spend and you scale that's the secret of scale. Yeah. Okay, I want to dig into that a little bit more. Uh, we've just got to go to the adverts, so uh, don't go away. Okay, so before the break, uh, you were just talking about how companies should really try and figure out their personas, if you like, their best personas to sell to in order to get the maximum out of their ads. At the start of the show, we were talking about how you uh, run the biggest lead gen summit in the UK. Um, so people that come to the, to the summit, um, what would you say uh, are some of the things that they walk away from thinking like, wow, that's, that's blown my mind? So I think when the, the mind blowing piece is always kind of the future uh, and the potential of a lot of these platforms. So the thing that fills seats is that people do want to know about what's happening with the next technology and what's happening and, and, and they love a tool or they love a little trick or hack to be able to do something better. So those are kind of the nice quick wins. But the big stuff that people kind of go, wow, is when you start to look at what's going to be happening in the market. So we did a big piece on um, what's going to be happening with the future of messaging. And so we started to say, well, you do realize that email marketing, for example, is, is great, but look at the open rates. So my, my average open rates for my clients is kind of like 25% and like a 2 to 3% click-through rate. So that's just nuts. So you've got a huge database and 2 to 3% of them are actually clicking through your stuff. It's kind of pointless, but people still do it because it's free to do. Whereas you then start to look at the results that we're showing from something like uh, Messenger and using something like ManyChat, which we presented at the lead gen, and we were showing results of a 95% open rate and a 40% click-through rate. And people are like, what? Yeah. And then you start to look at the different Facebook assets that they have. So you've got Instagram direct messaging, you've got um, WhatsApp, which Facebook have, and then Messenger. And they've just announced that the Messenger tool set, if you like, the software, is going to be driving all free apps. Mm -hmm. And so you know that the... The kind of the, the free ride we're all getting on WhatsApp is not going to last forever. They've got to bring some sort of monetization in. So they're going to bring some ads in at some point. So Messenger's driving that now. You're getting ads on Messenger. Soon it will probably go onto WhatsApp. There'll be some way of doing ads in there. And then the final piece is going to be obviously the Instagram, which is kind of the goose that's going to lay in the golden egg for Facebook at the moment. All of that put together is firing outweighing any usage on any social media channel. So it's just massive if you think about the amount of people that are using those three platforms. So 
moving away your subscriptions. Everybody says the fortune's in the, um, in the list and the, money, the money's in the list of the email, but actually moving your email subscribers into a many chat subscriber base and then running campaigns for it is phenomenal. We, we did it for um, uh, one of my clients, a client called Party Hard Travel that does 18 to 30s holidays out in great places in, in well, not so great places in Spain and stuff, but young people places. And uh, um, it's, <laughs> it's been a while since I've wanted to go there. Um, and, and their subscription base, they've got 12,000 messenger subscribers in one month by switching across that platform. And then of that 12,000, they're getting a 95% open rate. That's a lot of people looking at this stuff and it's had a massive effect on their income. They've, they've increased um, 100% um, year on year. Um, and the, the last jump, which is going from just over a million to three million, um, is they can contribute down to that messenger switch. It's just that little switch to that and be able to get that uplift. Amazing. So anyway, we did all that. Do you feel that like that, that company you just mentioned before, they, they invested uh, this money and time and effort, they made this switch and they had a big uplift in revenue and everybody wants that. Yeah. But the reality, I guess, is that, this is the way I see it anyway, you, correct me if you, if you feel differently, is that the three platforms, that the way that the kind of trend works is that uh, you can make people aware of your product in, uh, in systems like Facebook and Messenger and all of that sort of stuff because they go there and they spend time there. You can make them aware of things that they weren't necessarily going to go and buy. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I just bought a, a backpack that I wasn't searching for. It just came up and it was like, oh, that looks quite good. I end up buying it. So that you can make people aware of stuff in Facebook. They then do their research on Google. They then buy the product in Amazon. And it seems like that's the kind of path that they take, if you like. You know, I mean, I get the fact that like some companies don't sell stuff on Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, estate agents, for instance. But but that's the kind of general sort of path. So do you think sometimes companies struggle with the idea that although you get them loads of leads or engagement or whatever it might be in the Facebook part, it doesn't actually turn into money unless they have other systems in place a bit further down the line. So sometimes they can sort of go. Oh yeah, you got me a hundred leads. So what? Um, what? What's your sort of thoughts on that? Yeah, a anybody can buy traffic. Just give me some money, I'll buy you some traffic. So you can get the right people to your stuff, but then getting them to convert, we call it an info swap. So them swapping their information exchange for your information, that's important. Nobody's subscribing to newsletters anymore. You've got to work really hard to generate the leads. So I would say for the B2B service, it's, it's kind of creating little mini courses that are free or some sort of premium type of ebook, but even ebooks are a bit old hat at the moment. So you can do, um, as I say, a mini course working well or a scorecard or something that, that gives me a lot of value in exchange for me. Because everybody wants my email. I know that everybody wants my email. But then from there, you've got to work so hard on your upsell. And so we kind of have a process that's called um, convert, loop, upsell, repeat. And so what it means is once you convert them, you've got to keep on looping them back around into your taster product. So something that's a little bit of money that they buy, um, they, that you need them to buy. And you just keep on looping them around and communicating about this one thing until they buy it. And then you communicate to the next bit on your ladder and then the next bit and the next bit and the next bit. And so once you can keep on looping, that's what draws them away from going to Amazon or what have you, because it gives you the opportunity to keep on saying why it's so good that they're buying that from you. And I also, you, you need to be in a category of one. So if you are a commodity, if you are just selling yoga mats on Amazon, then you're just gonna be a commodity. But actually, what if you were selling vegan, um, handmade Indian yoga mats? You know, Then there's not many people that do that. So you can create a brand around that and you can be a category of one. And then you can use these great tools like Amazon because it will, it will help you so much because you can do really well. Or they, you can say, we're not on Amazon. You have to come and find us and buy from us because we're boutique-y and people yeah. like that. And so you, you can't, if you want to be a commodity, great, but it's a race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you want to go and step yourself up to be able to say something you're a bit different or go really into a niche, a little bit like yourself, so you're, you're, you're focusing on um, the estate agent market, the property market, and so you're running great, great campaigns into that market and they know you as the property, the estate agent guy, so your level of, um, Ca your, your sort of cachet in the industry is far higher. Whereas if you were just an, an agency that had a, a great tool, 
um, people are kind of like, well, yeah, there's, off, off, you know, there's no. two a penny, yeah. Whereas if you, you know, I'm the lead gen guy, I've solved that problem for you, it's about lead generation, you're the, you're the expert around property, that's the guy that you want to go to to be able to sell or to help you sell your estate agency better. And that's what people have to do. So yeah. don't don't be an, an everyday yoga mat. Be a you know vegan. vegan. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it, how does a company start the process of doing that? You look at a very commoditized thing at the moment. Let's t- like a state agency. You know, estate agents go around. They tell you they can take photos and they put you on right move, and they're gonna. And it comes down to price, mm. right? They're the yoga mat. Mm. How does a company start to step away from that? and move into a uh, field of one? So I think first of all, you need to know who you're gonna sell to. So you need to look at something called customer lifetime value, CLV. And the customer lifetime value is vital because if you know how long and how much someone spends with you, then you can start to look at what the commonalities are around your customer base. So we will say to people, download all your customers from zero or whatever you're using, then rank them all in the most value and how long they stay. Work out what your average customer lifetime value is. Then once you know your averages, so say your average is, you know, you're getting 10 grand off a customer and they average the say with you for 11 months. Then try and change those averages so that it actually looks more like 15 grand and it's only, it's 12 months by culling everybody that is at the bottom and that bottom bit means that this top bit's really valuable. Then look at that and go, right, what do these people look like? Let's look at the Petri dish of these customers. Oh, actually, they are that target market and they kind of look similar. And OK, great. Well, now we know that they are this type of person. Where are they hanging out? Who owns that audience already? Who's selling into that audience that isn't competing with you but complementing you? So then you look at partnerships and targeting and then you go, right, that audience would see me as being an estate agency, um, you know, an estate, they're all estate agents and I'm a, I'm a lead generator for estate agents. Great. Now I'm now going to name myself that. Let them pigeonhole you. I think one of the, thing, one of the interesting things um, someone said to me once was that people get niche claustrophobia and they get worried about being in a niche and it all feels very dark and it's all like, too, I don't want, don't put me in a pigeonhole, you know, don't put baby in the corner like this, all that sort of stuff. And go, really guys? You know, to be able to launch a cannonball, you have to put it into a very small, dark place and then pff, it lights a fire and it just goes. And that's very much like niching. If you get yourself into a really nice tight niche, then people know you. And of course, you all know the best recommendation, doesn't matter all the marketing work you and I could do for a client, the best thing is for them to get a recommendation. It just yeah. is. And so you only get recommendations if people know how to pigeonhole you. Yeah. And that's how it works. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I think lots of, lots of people struggle with that particular part of their business and that bit part of their business only. You know, it's they're willing scary. to spend money on marketing, they're willing to put time and effort in and all that sort of stuff, but they're, they're chasing too much stuff yeah. that, like you say, if, if we were... If I was uh, not focusing on the estate agency sector and just talking about anything, then what is there to differentiate you yeah. at the end of it all? If you're everything to everyone, you're nothing to no one. Yeah. It's all, and, and also, I say to people, and they go, oh, but I'll lose all this great business. Say, niche your marketing, not your business, right? So if you get a killer client that comes, that wants to work with you, and you're working on estate agents, and they're a solicitor, and they're willing to spend 10 grand a month, and you want... Take it, mm. just take it as a part, but let them know that you're this type of thing. And if they still want to work with you, great. Yeah. And you'll take it on, but you don't have to say no, you just niche your marketing. So outwardly, you're that type of business. Interesting. Um, okay, so we've, we've pretty much come to the end of the show. Um, if someone is interested in that lead summit side of things, mm-hmm. uh, how often do you do it? Where's the best place for them to go if they want to get in contact with you? How should they, what should they do? So, so my, um, so there's, there's a couple of things. So my big thing at the moment is that I want to bring the lead gen to every kind of major town in the UK. So if anybody's out there who's a marketeer that's struggling to get clients and wants to come and license the lead gen as a brand, jump in. I'd love to speak to you about it. And, and, and because we're good at SEO and stuff, just type in lead gen academy or lead gen and you'll find us. The other bit is that if you want to come to a summit, we do them twice a year. We do them just near London um, and uh, just type in lead gen summit. Awesome. You'll find it. Brilliant. Thanks very much <laughs> right, for coming in. Great. It's been Thank fantastic. You. Really appreciate it.